Psalms chapter 59 to the chief musician Al Chasvith again means destroy not a Mitchum which is uh, a prayer of David when Saul sent and they watched the house to kill him again this psalm is brought a time in the Bible I believe this is when uh, David is it, uh, flees just before he flees where Michael puts the the image in the bed and David flees where Saul sends the troops and said go kill David go get him bring his bed to me so I can kill him deliver me from my enemies well the enemy here is Saul his own kin of Abraham Isaac Jacob 12 tribes David's of Judah, which was uh, Leah, and uh, Saul was of Benjamin, which was of, uh, of uh, Rachel. And it probably always been a, a, a fight between the two families because Rachel was loved above all the wives, the three wives, four I mean, excuse me. And then Joseph was loved above all the children because he was the son of Rachel, and then when Joseph was presumed dead, then Benjamin became the, 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 the light, the love, and all that. Oh, my God. I've commented on this phrase before. This is a serious prayer. It's a time of, of trouble. It's a time of and deep desire. Defend me from them that rise up against me. King Saul. And David twice in his life had opportunity to go after Saul and refused because Saul was God's anointed. David knew that the only way Saul was to die would be by the hands of God and not through David. And Jesus said, offenses must come. Someone's got to die. Your old got to die. Jesus Christ had to be betrayed. But Jesus says, Woe unto him that does it. Now, with Saul, Saul committed suicide. But a, a, another man came to David and said, I did it. He took the credit and he was killed for it. Judas sold out Jesus. He didn't have to. Somebody had to. Somebody had to proclaim that Jesus was to be crucified and Pilate didn't have to but he did and Pilate three times said that he was innocent and still had him crucified so what David is saying here is deliver me from the workers of iniquity defend me from them that rise up against me deliver me from my enemies he's relying on God because that guy Saul is anointed by God David can't do nothing. Unless God was spoken to David, I believe, whether by visions, by uh, dreams, by an audio voice, or, uh, however, David would have to or would wait for a complete sign, Jews require a sign, something for God for, in order for David to kill Saul. And David never got that, so David was innocent to King Saul. He's placing everything in God's hand because he can't do nothing. I mean, that anointing of the king, that anointing of the high priest is what we call the word Christ, anointed. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. They're out to get him. I mean, you would want to, if somebody was out to get you, someone hated you, you would want to be out of their life and save me from bloody men. What's that mean? Murderer. There are people that want David dead. Saul told his troops, the workers of iniquity, go get him, bring him on his bed. I don't care if he's sick. You bring him to me so I can kill him. Where's the men? God would have charged those men that brought David to King Saul 
because they knew why David was going to be brought to Saul. It would have been for murder. Joab and his three brothers, even though two of them killed, had murder. I forget what, I think it was Mesa, but. And only one killed the guy, Joab. But his brother, Abish, I don't even want to try to know the name. I'd, I'd be wrong if I say I knew the name. But Joab and his brother were charged with the murder. Jezebel and her husband Ahab. Jezebel killed Naboth, but Ahab was charged with the crime. Why? Because he was her husband. He should have been in charge. And he was king. David knows that Saul wants him dead. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. They're watching him. Saul, when David's on the wrong on the run, Saul would seek these cities and they would report to Saul and say, Hey, we've seen David here. Saul would say, Hey, have you seen David? Anybody has seen David? Oh, you don't feel sorry for me? And you feel sorry for David? Oh, if anybody would care about me? And Doag said, I saw David over there at the at the tabernacle seeking the priest. The mighty are gathered against me, strong ones. Not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They are not after David because David committed a crime. Matter of fact, David's actions, David, what his conduct, how he acted and, and performed his character before King Saul, everybody loved him, and that made Saul hate him the worst. It was not something David done. If it would be for sin, then you would bring him up. But David, I haven't sinned. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Now the expression we use is not my fault. I'm innocent. I didn't do nothing wrong. You cannot find between King Saul and David where David had done wrong. Saul had done wrong. Saul was the one that went into the priest's office and had the sacrifices when he wasn't supposed to. At that point, God said, you're done. And then Samuel went and anointed David, and Saul knew that. And that's where God left the Holy Spirit off of Saul and gave him that evil spirit. And David would play before him to, when he was at the evil spirit to relieve the savage beast with the music. David did all he could and everything he could for Saul. And he still got treated wrong. And the Bible says what David principally fought. Them that are your enemies, you're to love. You're to pray for them. You're to help them. You're to feed them. And he coals a fire on their head. And that's exactly the, the illustration you get with Saul and David. Awake to help me. And behold. Now, he's not, God doesn't sleep. But don't you think, I mean, after what David's going through, wouldn't you think after all this praying, Lord, uh, you mean you never in your life ever suspected God not listening to you? You never in your life ever thought, hey, God, are you, are you sleeping up there? Lord, I remember passing the Bible with the, the 12 disciples. You were sleeping. When you wake up, And there's times in our lives, like the disciples on that ship, you, now God doesn't sleep, but you've got to wake God up in order for him to do something. Had the disciples not waken Jesus up, just, we don't know what would have happened. But we do know one thing, they would have ended up on the other side because Jesus told them, we got to go on the other side, but what would have happened? I don't know. And there are times when you read the life of, of Jesus Christ, he keeps walking until somebody cries out. 
and then he'll stop. The two two men in the road of Emmaus, they're walking. They're going to go off and, and go to this house and eat. And Jesus would have just kept on going, except they said, hey, come eat with us. Well, not come dine with us. See, the thing is, if you don't cry out to Jesus sometime, he's going to go right by you. That's a biblical flat fact. Oh, Lord, why didn't you ever help me? And James says you, you don't ask, you don't receive because you don't ask. And remember, when you tell a church to pray for you, you pray for you too. Don't There's people out there, oh, I'm not supposed to pray for myself. Where'd you get that? You surely don't see that in Psalms. David's praying, hey, Lord, help him. Thou therefore, thou therefore, O Lord God of hosts, what's that host? The angels, the armies of Israel, hosts, a, a gathering people, the God of Israel. Oh, we're getting personal now. The God of Israel. You got? Do you have a God of Rome? That's the wrong one. Do you have a God of America? That's the wrong one. Do you have the God of Mecca? That's the wrong one. Do you have the God of India? That's the wrong one. You've got to have the Jewish God, the God of Israel. And you know most of your occults hate the Jews. You know Roman Catholic Church steals from the Jews what is Jews and say that God's all done with the Jew and we're that heavenly kingdom that God, you know, through the Jew. No, the heavenly kingdom hasn't been here yet. It's going to show up in the millennium and then, and then eternity. You know why the church, the Roman Catholic Church, killed Christians left and right? Because God told them, told the Jew to kill them left and right in the Old Testament. But the problem is they were heathen. They were idolaters. They were wicked. They had filled their cup with sin. And God, people were the Jews, where the church says, hey, we're the Jews. We're the holy ones. We're going to... No, no, no. You reversed it. Satan always reverses things. The wicked killed the righteous. In the Old Testament, the righteous killed the wicked. Put that for your constitution and freedom of religion. Didn't we read in Exodus? You go in there, destroy all the idols, don't make any idols, don't, don't make no covenants with them. What do you think the constitution is as far as a freedom of religion? It's a covenant with religions to do whatever they want. But you can't have a Bible. Whoa, wait a minute. You can't pray. Well, wait a minute. Where's my rights? Glad to see you. Awake to visit all the heathen. Now, what's that awake there? Again, God don't sleep. Doesn't the Bible say as one as he rises up out of sleep, his eyes are red? That's the second advent. The heathen, therefore, O oh God, <coughs> excuse me, hosts of Israel, Israel hidden in the wilderness, the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ coming upon the heathen. The only ones of the heathen that God won't judge, uh, Matthew 24, 25, is, the, is the, the sheep nations that help the Jews. Everybody else are going to be judged. Listen, how your conduct you treat the Jew is the only way I see for anybody who's not Jewish to get saved in the tribulation. Other than that, the tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. you got to remember, this book from Genesis to Revelation is Jewish. The God of Israel. The ones that are against the, the, the Jews, the heathen. God told Abraham, Genesis 12, and passed it on to Isaac, and passed it on to to uh, Jacob, 
Those that bless thee, I will bless. Those that will curse thee, I will curse. And watch this. Ready? Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. And there's that musical rest where you find the tribulation. Uh, at the second advent. Or the millennium. We just seen the second advent. Awake. Wicked. Any wicked transgressors. Well, we know the wicked one will be in the tribulation. They return at evening. Dark. Supposed to be sleeping. Six o'clock. Supposed to be home. They make a noise like a dog. You know, dogs are an unclean animal. You know, they're likened to the Gentiles. Jewish people didn't have dogs as, as, as pets. Dogs lived out in the street. Dogs would eat the garbage on the streets that they would throw out. That and pigs. New York City, until very recently, they would have dogs and pigs running in the streets to clean up the garbage. Scavengers and go round about the city. Study garbage sometime. That's an interesting study. Behold, they belch out with their mouth. Bah! Swords are in their lips. So there's a sword swallower. In the King James Bible. The guy who swallows a sword. <coughs> Maybe. I told you about the Saint snake charmers the other day. There's a trick to that. They take it literal. A, lip, a sword down the lips. For who say they doth hear? They're burping and talking. And who's going to hear us? God does. Listen, God, Jesus Christ, knew what they were saying in his time when they weren't even saying it, when they said it in his heart. He's, the words were, and Jesus perceived. That means they were thinking it in their heart. But thou, God, O Lord, shall laugh at them, Proverbs chapter 1. And see, it's Psalms 1 or Psalms 2 where it talks about God laughing. Gee, we read the other day where it says that the saints behind Jesus Christ will be singing and praising. While God is laughing. When the second advent comes for us that are saved and for Jesus, it's a joyful time. We're coming to get the Jew. Not for the heathen. It says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Is it not darkness rather than light? Woe unto you. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. They won't know what's happening. Read Romans chapter 1 sometime, where God gives them over. Read where it talks about the wicked one in, in uh, Thessalonians, where God gave them up. They give them a strong delusion that they'll believe a lie, the Bible says. The Bible's a real book. Because of his strength, God, will I wait on thee, God, for God is my defense. Wait on me. Because of his strength. He is the defense. Well, for the for the, the Jews that have left the Antichrist in the wilderness, Revelation 12, you got to rely on the Lord. He's going to be the strengthful one. You're going to wait on thee. What do you mean wait on him? When he comes to get them. 
and defense of what? The Antichrist. As for David, hey, I got King Saul after me. I'm going to let the Lord wait. Have you ever read the complete story of David and Saul? One time they're playing, he'll be going around the mountain when he comes. I mean, they're just chasing each other and nothing's happening. And Jonathan comes out, hi, Dave, how you doing? Well, by gosh, how'd you find me? And you know, God gave Jonathan an opportunity to stay there and live. And he didn't. So what's one thing we can get so far with 59 Psalms? If you want to study the tribulation, study Saul and David. Saul is the Antichrist and David as a Jew. And if I'm correct, there's a couple times that, that David has an opportunity to kill Saul, but he doesn't. Uh, I think something about the Antichrist gets a deadly wound. That'd be something off of the, the study through David and, and Saul. David's in the wilderness. And Saul's after him. After David and Saul had been in Jerusalem. You can take that one. That, that would be a great study. That would be a great thing to learn. Next time you read the, the entire life of David and, and Saul. Oh, can't wait to read the television. Why don't you think about the, the future prophetic. That is not just a history. It's also prophetic. It's going to happen again. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. Take care of. Secure. God shall let me see my desire upon my enemy. Death to the enemy. Those Jews that are in the wilderness, when Jesus comes, and when the Antichrist is, 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 is taken and, and put into the lake of fire with a false prophet, don't you think those Jews are going to rejoice and be glad? Jacob's trouble is over. Here is the Messiah finally. And we are going into Jerusalem, the land. And in Jerusalem, there is David's throne. And Jesus Christ as king and... Yeah, David, the prince. Slay them not. Least my people forget. Scatter them by thy power, God's power, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. Let the Lord take the battle. Let the, let the Lord have the power. Let the Lord do it. If you do it, you might be charged with murder. And as an Old Testament saint, you don't want to be charged with murder because you go to hell. You better make sure you have God's permission. The best thing is let the Lord do it. You know what Pilate should have done? I ain't going to do it. You take Jesus, and he told him, said, you go try and buy your law. And they, Pilate just said, no, that's it. I'm not going to do it. And God would have to do something else. But you know what? If Pilate did not get saved, and I don't know, I wasn't there. I've, re I've heard stories about Pilate that he went, became a lunatic and stuff like that. I don't know. I've... But how would you like to be charged with the blood of Jesus Christ along with Judas, the high priest, and he, he who ever put the nails into his Hands, how'd you like to be? That is where Pontius Pilate will be charged with murder of Jesus <coughs> and the entire nation of Israel. His blood be upon us. 
was a very stupid thing to say. We have no king but Caesar. And who's running around running Jerusalem today? Those fathers and nuns. And these ignorant, holy Christians go on a holy tour and they get shown by a bunch of Catholics the Catholic Bible of Jerusalem. And I've seen and heard of preachers who fell for it. And they come back and tell them the great stories. I'm listening like, that don't sound Bible to me. Got to be something wrong. Verse 12. For the sin of their mouth and their words of their lips, let them be, ever be taken in their pride. And for cursing and lying, John 8, 44, which they speak. So Matthew chapter 12 speaks and says that Jesus says that by every word shall a man give an account. Adolf Hitler, I use him a lot, as far as I know, never killed one Jew. Personally. And if I'm wrong, please, please tell me. Show me the evidence. I'm not saying there is, I'm not saying there's not. As far as I know, Adolf Hitler had not killed one Jew. But do you know he will be charged with the murder of every single Jew that was killed under his reign? He said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Brother Stalin, you just said he, he did not do it. Yeah, but his mouth made all, he gave orders with his mouth to kill him. He will give an account, according to Matthew 12, and what we just read now, with his big fat mouth, he will be a, a, a accessory to the crime, that's the word I was looking for, of the murder of all those Jews. Let's take this thing. It's happened two or three times now in our day and age. And this was just recorded, but who knows how many times it's happened without being recorded. A woman goes, talks to a guy, and she wants her husband killed, or vice versa. Well, I paid a guy. He did it. You wait till you stand before God and find out you were charged too. Well, I didn't do it. I chickened out, or the authorities caught me, and I went to jail. You thought about it. So you know what I haven't heard in the pre in the pulpits? I'm trying to think. It's been so long and since I've been saved since 87, 1987. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I've never heard a message on sins we're thinking about when you're guilty. Am I a murderer? Yes, I am. I will tell you right now, I have never shed any man's blood. But there's been some people I thought about it. Some of the comments I make. God will charge me with murder. And if you have a problem with the brethren that saved, what did John say in First John? He said, you're like into a murder if you hate your brother. How about that one? And I thank God I have never had that charge. I've had a few Christians in mind that, you know, they made me angry and, and I've gotten bitter and stuff like that, but I've never hated them. Just didn't want to have anything to do with them and it's under the blood now. you got to be careful with your big fat mouth. And you got to be careful what you say without being heard. I'm talking to children. You know, when you talk underneath your breath about your parents, the Bible says, honor thy mother and father. And listen, even Jesus knew the thoughts and what was said in the heart, and it was even audio. No one heard it because it was inside the heart, and Jesus perceived. Ought to be a warning to you that you will be in, in, in charge with what you think and with what you say. Better be careful. 
Consume them in wrath. That's the second advent. Consume them. That's twice. You know, there's a fire that comes out before the Lord. There's a place in the Bible that says they'll be standing up and they'll be devoured through their, through their eyeballs and all that. That they may not be gone. You know, there's a point after the, after the millennium when, when devil is loose for a season. He gathers a great army and what? They're gone. And they may not be. And let them know that God rules in Jacob. That's got to be the millennium. Or all in eternity. Unto the ends of the earth, Selah. Well, that's the second advent. After the tribulation period. That's Jesus Christ reigning in Jerusalem. While Satan's locked up. And at the evening, let them return. And let them make a noise like a dog. Let's repeat it. And go around about the city. That's twice said. Something about that. That was in verse 6. That was in verse 14. What? I don't know. Let them wander up and down for meat. What happened to the burping? That's what the dogs did. They scrabbled around for meat. And, gr and grudge, not, grudge if they be not satisfied. Like I said, you, they, you did not have a dog as a pet in a Jewish home. The only way that dog ate was by you throwing garbage out in the street. And then they would come along and they sweep up the streets. Dogs were a uh, garbage disposal. It was a dog that, that, that ate up Jezebel. Jezebel became dog poop. Don't step in Jezebel. But I will sing of thy power. Gotta be the millennium. And yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. Second advent, morning. Then you say that we are going to be singing after the after the Lord rejoicing. Fifty seven ten. Uh, Fifty eight ten, excuse me. For thou hast been my defense. David's defense personally. Look at all the times that God saved David. And look at all the times God's going to save the Jew from that Antichrist. You know, we got drones flying around now. A refuge in the day of my trouble. What's it called? The time of Jacob trouble. There you go. Unto thee, God, O oh my strength, will I sing for God, for God, in my defense. America trusts submarines, uh, missiles. Airplanes, tanks, battleships, never God. You know, when, when, when President Bush, I, I, don't know, I read his book about his salvation and all that. When, when we went over there and decided we're going to go to Iraq and we're going to start all that, I was working at EB. It was a great thing because a submarine was the first one to start the war over there. A submarine that was built in Groton, Connecticut. I never once seen him come and make a public statement before all America and say, would you join me in prayer before we make this attack?
And he was supposed to be a Christian. I don't know. Why didn't he get down with all America on TV and radio and say, I'd like us to pray? Well, I have a report that we're not sure about weapons of mass destruction. Let's seek the God in heaven. And if it's wrong for us to do, let it not happen. I don't remember that happening. But we went right in there with the missiles and, and all the rockets. And we saw the nice little pictures of the missiles that have cameras and all that. How much did it cost America to put a camera on a missile so we could watch it get exploded? Who was a dumb idiot that thought of that one? Why do you need that? You got CNN and all the reporters all around to film it and tell you exactly what's going on. Take the news reporters and put them on the scene. Let them record it as the missile hits the, I mean, hit the buildings. Don't, I, you know they spent over a million dollars on those cameras that were going to explode. And the God of my mercy. You know, in war, there's a tragic thing. Children get killed. God is merciful. And God is gracious. And then when God comes back, no Jew in the wilderness is going to get accidentally killed. All them Jews that are there waiting for the Messiah when Jesus comes at that moment will be taken up and gone. There will be no accidental killing. None of us, according to Joel chapter 2, none of us Christians are going to be killed. Uh, you got an army going to battle and not one of them dies. That's, that's a wonderful, uh, really great thing. When the walls of Jericho came down, how many Jews died? I don't think any. Isn't that remarkable? You got a whole entire city was was a, was attacked and, and victory, and I don't think one Jew died. The merciful God, the glorious God. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul. My Savior.